Welcome to Kise Sri Foundation and this is the Maths program, Autumn 1, Week 3. So let's get our maths books ready with our stationery so we can start writing our notes. So on our books we're going to write the date, the short date, and we're going to write our title, Areas and Perimeter of Compound Shapes. Now in maths, we are revisiting and extending our knowledge and understanding of a few things here. So we should have by now, you should know what an area is and what a perimeter is, but we will recap over some of these things. So let's see what we are revisiting and extending. It's area and perimeter of a compound shape. Uh, complex shapes work paying particular attention to rectangles and triangles. So we're going to be looking at more trickier shapes and we're going to be looking closely at the rectangles and triangles. We're also going to be introducing you to formulas. Now, this is the work that you will be doing in Key Stage 3. So the expectation of understanding what a formula is and how to use them is coming to play. So remember, you're writing these notes down. If you need to press pause and go for it and take your time, remember, spread your work out and keep it clean. So let's go through our revision. Revision, what do I know? Now, these are the things that you should know. And if you don't know them, hey, I suppose it's time for you to write some notes down. And remember, use those highlighters, different color pens if you need to, because it will make it all clear in your heads. So you can draw a table just like this, making sure that you're labeling, using that ruler correctly, making sure your work is nicely spread out. If you're taking your time with writing your notes now, you're doing yourself a great bit of favour because later on, when you're doing those GCSEs, this is what's going to help you. Okay, so you're writing down the shapes, the names, the formula of area, and here we've got a square, and the square we've got the height and the base. To find the area of this, you do base times height. Now, if you're looking at a rectangle now, that's the one in the centre, height times by base and that's the formula to find out the area and to find the area of a triangle you find the perpendicular height you multiply that by the base now remember that is the height of a triangle let's look at some more in the following page remember press pause when you need to so you can continue writing your notes now here are the shapes that we don't hear of too often you may have done if you're lucky and if you haven't this is a good recap so draw these shapes down we've got the trapezium parallelogram rhombus and a kite k-i-t-e so the formula of a trapezium of an area is a plus b now if you look carefully at the shape I have labelled top A and the base has been labelled B. So to work out the area for this, if you look on the far right hand side, you will see A plus B, so that's the lid if you like, the lid plus the base, A plus B, and then you're going to multiply that by the height. Now look at where the height is, it is not the slanted line, it's the height from the base to that top and you multiply it by the height and then you divide it by two okay so look very carefully at these if you like you can experiment and you can perhaps write out some questions of a shape like this and see if it works out now let's have a look at the next one a parallelogram a parallelogram let's look carefully here it's the base B A S E multiplied by the perpendicular. The perpendicular line there is the height. So we are going up. Now it's called a perpendicular because it's going up and look, it makes a right angle as well. So it's a perpendicular. So it's the height multiplied by base. Nice and easy. Then we look at the rhombus. Now the rhombus is the length multiplied by the height. Go and look at the kite we've got the height and we've got the length so look carefully at this shape 
Let's have a look at the formula. The formula of the area for this kite is length multiplied by height and then you divide it by two. Okay, so write out these notes carefully. Press pause if you need to. I have chosen this shape here, the rectangle, just to give you another glance on a larger scale of what a formula looks like. So we've got length and width here. So when you multiply the length and the width, it will give you the area. And this is what we call a formula. So the notes you were writing beforehand, this is an example, a closer look of what we're looking for in terms of a formula. Now you don't have to draw this or write this down because you would have done it already from the last couple of clips. Now, this is a compound shape. Now, the word compound, let's think about this word. This word compound comes up in English too. So if I was to give you the word butterfly, football, eyeball, what does it remind you of? Fireworks. Yes, I bet you're thinking of it now. Compound words mean when you put more than one word and you put them together to form a new word. So a compound shape now, what on earth would a compound shape mean? Yes, a compound shape is when you fix, when you attach, when you put together more than one shape, which then forms this new shape. So this is a compound shape because it's made up of more than one shape. Do you know where they are? Now, where would you segregate these shapes? Where would you divide them or split them up? You can draw this into your books. This is a good explanation. Now, how do we find the area of a compound shape? Well, there's a few steps and I'm going to show you them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to segregate them. We need to separate these shapes. So here I've split them. You can see the two blue shapes have been now pulled apart. But of course, you can't do this on paper, can you? No way. So we've got to think of a way to split them so your brain can think about how to work out the area. So what do we do? We're going to label them. That's nice and easy. So look, instead of splitting the A and B, we just write in A and B. Hey, presto, that's nice and easy. Jot this down. Press pause if you need to. So let's look at the steps. We love the steps because when we put things into steps, if we have a strategy, we have a game plan, then things get easier. So here they are. Number one, find the shapes. Number two, label them. So if you look at my shape here, my compound shape is made up of a square and a triangle. And look at the picture on the right hand side. I have got them labeled A and B. Then in on number three, we're going to work out each of the areas. So what do we do? We multiply where we need to. And if you're not certain what to do, go back and look at your previous notes. This is what they're there for. So A, for example, if it was 12 centimetres squared, notice the units centimetres squared. And if B was 24 centimetres squared, we then move on to step four. And that is where you add the areas together. So look at this. Step four, 12 plus 24 is 36. So it's 36 centimetres squared. Don't forget to leave the square there. If you don't, then your answer is wrong. And hey, bingo, that is your answer. Here's the formula. Compound shape is area A plus area B. And that is it. Make sure you're writing these notes down because they will help you. So just when you thought things were getting interesting, well, I've got a new compound shape here. It's a rectangle within a rectangle. So I've got one of blue and one of pink. Now let's have a look at what we do here. To work out the area of this border, that's the pink part, what do we do? We first work out the total area of the pink and then you take it away from the smaller one. So the area of the inner rectangle, which is the blue part, and whatever you have left over will be your answer. So you can get questions like this too. Now don't forget, you should be writing your notes. So if any time you need to rewind, you need to pause and go for it because this is all good for you. 
We're now looking at perimeter. So perimeter, the distance around a shape. Now I've got a couple of shapes here. I've got a rectangle with the measurements of four centimeters and two centimeters going up wrapping around then i've got the triangle here in this triangle i've got five centimeters four centimeters and seven centimeters and look at the bottom i have got the formula for a square now that would be if you had a square it would obviously have four of the same lengths because it's got four of the same lengths all you have to do is find the measurement of one of the lengths and then you multiply it by four bingo if you had a rectangle, just as we have here, four centimeters, two centimeters, four centimeters, two centimeters, what do you do? Well, you can do two centimeters plus four centimeters, and then you just multiply them by two. You could, of course, do two centimeters plus four centimeters plus two centimeters plus four centimeters. It's a longer way, but you can do it. But the formula would be to multiply one length plus another length. Now, let's have a look at the triangle. The triangle is A plus B plus C. Now, five centimeters plus four centimeters plus seven centimeters. And what you'll recognize is if you had an equilateral triangle, a triangle where the lengths were all of the same distance, then of course, a triangle having three sides, you would multiply it by three. So, in theory, what do we know here? The easiest way to work at a perimeter is you just add up all the sides. It becomes trickier or sometimes students get a bit confused when they start seeing the brackets and the multiplication sign and the pluses and the dividing, etc. But there are always other ways of doing things. But the reason why it seems a bit trickier is because you've got all of these additional parts now that we use. But that's OK, so you must, mustn't be afraid of them. It is saying the same thing, but it's just making your life easier. And the more you practice, you will catch on. You will understand what's going on. So don't forget to write down these notes, because sometimes just writing these down help you understand. Now, here we have some for you to practice. So we've got question one, question two, question three. So these are some easy compound shapes. Let's see if you can do it. Go get them. Draw them, label them, press pause, give it a bash, and then have a look at the answers. Question one was 15 centimeters square. Question two, 29 centimeters squared. Question three, 33 centimeters squared. Make sure you're showing you're working out. Now, this is the most important part. Make sure you're going through your work. If you've got the pack that we also supply and we provide to some of our students make sure you are reviewing your work this is the most crucial part and it's crucial because there's no point making mistakes and not actually knowing that they are mistakes so someone has to point it out to you and it's better if that person is you go over your answers highlight your incorrect questions try and give them another go always question why and when you understand what went wrong that is when you start moving forward. Please take any photos, send it to us for any feedback or any additional help. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, comment, like and stay in touch. See you next week.